Ten Hut. It's a salute to our fighting forces as comics go to war on today's edition of Mask and Cape. Hey Internet, I'm Kevin McShane. And I'm America Young. Kevin, did you know that a Captain America number one with Cap punching Hitler in a face on the cover came out eight months before the United States went to World War II? I did not know that, but you know, ever since World War II, war comics have been a staple of comics publishers, second in popularity only to superheroes, and for a while, actually, romance comics. Oh, well then let's take a look at some of the best modern war comics in a segment we like to call Comics Go to War. Starting in 1941, DC's Black Hawk Squadron featured early artwork from legendary artist Will Eisner. Over the next 40 years, the Black Hawk Squadron saw many incarnations, including a successful 1987 reboot from writer-artist Howard Chaikin and a brief appearance in last year's New 52. Created by Robert Kaniger in 1959, DC's Sergeant Rock holds the title for the longest-running World War II comic book with 422 issues. Collecting the classic British war comics from the 70s and 80s, Charlie's War from Titan Books follows the soldier Charlie Bourne in the trenches of World War I. Written by Pat Mills, Charlie's War is notable for its extensive annotations and realistic portrayal of the horrors of war, not for the squeamish. Although not about combat directly, no list of war comics would be complete without Mouse by Art Spiegelman. Set in World War II and using cats for the Nazis and mice for the Jews, Mouse tells the story of Spiegelman's father and his experiences during the Holocaust. Since 1992, Mouse has won numerous awards including Eisner's, Harvey's, and the Pulitzer Prize, the first for a graphic novel. Fans of Jack Kirby and Stan Lee should check out Marvel Masterworks Sergeant Fury Volume 1, featuring Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos. Squaring off against real enemies like the Nazis and supervillains like Baron Zemo and Red Skull, the main character, Sergeant Nick Fury, would later go on to become Nick Fury, the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. During the Korean War, horror publisher EC Comics branched out into war comics with two-fisted tales and frontline combat. Featuring incredible artwork by Wally Wood, Jack Davis, John Severin, and Alex Toth, these anti-war titles pushed the limits for violence at the time and eventually led to the creation of the Notorious Comics Code. For the Vietnam War, check out The Nam from Marvel Comics, originally conceived by Vietnam vet Doug Murray as a 12-year miniseries that would parallel the events of the wars in real time. The first issue of The Nam actually outsold X-Men the month it came out. Praised for its realism in the beginning, the series eventually resorted to guest appearances by The Punisher before it was finally canceled. And finally, an honorable mention has to go to Marvel's original G.I. Joe series. Although the Joes and Cobras weren't fighting an actual historic war, the original Marvel comic influenced a generation of readers, especially the famous Silent Issue, number 21. Which one was that? Uh, it's great. It uh, follows Storm Shadow, and there's no dialogue in the entire episode. Well, there's plenty of great war comics that we don't have time to cover, so be sure to let us know your favorites in the comments. And be sure to subscribe and join us next time for Stan Lee's World of Heroes. I'm Kevin McShane. And I'm America Young, and this has been Mask and Cape. DC Sergeant Rock holds the title for the longest running WW2 comic for 19. Uh, should I say World War II or WW2? World I was War halfway II. through it and I was like, <laughs> WW2. Yay, war! <laughs>